Hello and welcome to this uh, short presentation from myself. I'm David Evans, the Global IoT Solution Architect at Robustel Technologies. And today we're going to talk about smart roaming, a slightly different um, side of the technology in LoRaWAN and LoRaWAN gateways, but hopefully uh, something that could prove to be very useful. Um, if cellular backhaul becomes a, a critical part of your next project. So just to put um, a context to this presentation, uh, I wanted to share with you some, a little uh, of the history um, of the, the product or products that, that we're describing today. So the R3000 LG, uh, as you can see, is um, a quite a classic um, light industrial grade uh, indoor uh, router, uh, router slash gateway, in fact. And its history is uh, as as a router um, for six six to seven years now. It's been part of Robustel's um, portfolio, and it was about three or four years ago that. The add-in of an SX1301, the, the Semtech eight-channel chip, um, having robust OS, which is uh, the operating system, we'll come on to a little bit more. That gives you the R3000 LG, and um, I think by having already having tens of thousands of of 3G as it was, or 4G routers uh, in the same style. Um, Already, eighty percent of the bill of materials was going out the, you know, going out of the the factory in volume. So this really helps with with quality, with yield, and uh, obviously with cost as well, um, especially on the more expensive cellular um, components. So that's the core product uh, that we're talking about today, and. Just for completeness, there is an outdoor variant. Um, it's the same electronics inside, um, but as you would expect, um, PoE for easy outdoor insulation um, and the various considerations, um, I'm sealing to IP67, breathing caps and the like. And we talk about at the bottom there an extensive uh, extensive unique software features and that's really where today's conversation is is positioned about one of those features so within all of the Robustel products there is a Linux based operating system called Robust OS and it was developed uh, around five or six years ago in-house at Robustel HQ and one thing that certainly helps me to know exactly where the uh, the clever guy and his team that was responsible for the 110,000 lines of source code, um, you know, still are within the business uh, and building more and more new products on the platform and obviously beating the bugs out for five years of, of the existing environment means um, it's a pretty impressive stable product and just a, a note to say that it has been Deloitte uh, audited and has been pen tested by various other um, organizations around the world to um, do the usual checks for security and backdoors and the like. So Within the, the operating system in, in all devices, um, including the LoRa gateways, um, there is the ability to transmit information to the cloud. Um, obviously, it's uh, uh, not a new thing, but a uh, quite a well executed um, thing using Microsoft Azure IoT Hub uh, as the hosting environment and many of the features in Microsoft Azure. Um, Transmitting that information over MQTT gives a very, uh, a very sound uh, management environment for the gateways, as you can see with the usual 
information that you would expect over the air upgrades and uh, maps and and the light. Another feature just before we get into the main topic that uh, I think is worth mentioning is robust VPN. So by virtue of having um, a service uh, in, in Azure, um, Robust are able to host their own uh, VPN service, which basically marries together an inbound VPN from the gateway and an outbound VPN from uh, a user, typically in a Windows environment. And so some of you will probably be familiar with the concept of fixed IP SIMs. Well, this just gives you a fixed IP gateway. So whether the bearer is Ethernet, Wi-Fi, or 4G, uh, it doesn't matter how the traffic is getting out onto the public internet. Um, the ability to build the VPN over the top, take care of all the, the certificates and keys under the bonnet, um, and just keep it uh, validation as, as simple uh, Office 365 credentials based for the, um, for the software. Um, not important to everyone, but it, certainly if you want to do maintenance uh, with a gateway or gateways regularly, or if you want to talk to something connected to the gateway, so an Ethernet or a serial device as part of the overall deployment, um, if it's not just um, 868 or 9, 915 meg radio, if there's wired devices as well, it could prove to be very useful. So. This is just to give you a flavor of some of the things that have been evolving in robust OS. But the one we're covering today is smart roaming. And the, the actual history to smart roaming, um, well, part of the history of smart roaming uh, comes from uh, a previous role that I had as uh, working for a SIM card company majoring on providing roaming sims for, for maximum resilience and uh, seeing some of the challenges and the pain points for, for customers that um, had chosen to go down that path but didn't necessarily understand exactly what they were dealing with. And that's, um, that's what smart roaming is designed to help with, ultimately, uh, with the resilience of a state of deployed LoRaWAN gateways. So why are we talking about this today? I thought it was very important to put a context um, to this presentation. And it's really, really simple, um, but often glossed over or ignored or not considered, is that 3G, 4G comms from a gateway can be a fairly significant point of failure. So as you can see in the picture, if you lose the backhaul uh, in, in most integrations or in many integrations, certainly using a, a, a standard LoRaWAN network server in the cloud, uh, you can lose everything, or well, certainly everything from one site. So it's important to make the backhaul as resilient as possible. And that is why we're talking about smart roaming today. So I was hoping to do a live demo, but because um, it's not a long, um, not a long session at all, and some of this takes time, I thought I would take a uh, take some screenshots so we can move through it at a good pace. So when the gateway uh, boots, as you can see. Um, the status of smart roaming is scanning and the operator selection mode is pending. Now, these are terminologies that for brevity won't be covered in the full, um, won't be covered today, but we do have a, an extensive white paper we'll, we'll allude to at the end that can give you the detail if, if this is the sort of uh, subject that, that represents value um, in, in your deployments. So, the first thing that the device will do is, is populate the operator list. So this is done um, at boot time. It will cost about one and a half minutes 
for that to be performed and populated. And you'll notice the status against all these networks is uh, visible. And that's important. It's not a technical terminology, but they, they're all from a radio perspective. They are visible from, from that location. And I say that because um, not all roaming sims provide all network connections for commercial reasons, typically. So that's what's visible. And then a, a little longer, um, you'll see the elegance of smart roaming is to leave uh, the operator selection mode um, as automatic for as much as possible. Um, and again, this is described in the white paper that we, you can follow up with. Uh, and if you are involved in cellular comms, whether it's LoRa or not LoRa, I, I think is a very good read. I highly recommend you have a look. So you can see that it's connected. It's on automatic. We've got good signal strength, uh, reasonable latency um, and no packet loss. So it's just going to stay there and do what it does. And, and 90, 95 percent of the time, um, a roaming sim and a, and a gateway will perform like this. But in the instance that it doesn't, and it is quite a hard thing to uh, to manually um, recreate, that's why this is not quite a perfect example here. It's quite hard to dynamically disallow network operators from a roaming scheme to force smart roaming into action. But I think you get an idea from those top two lines that if Vodafone UK on 3G has failed, then um, the the algorithm will, will step through current um, subsequent networks. So it's currently on O2 making an assessment of the connection. So I think anecdotally, there's, there's a really nice example here where uh, our friends at Voitech in the UK, um, during 2018, uh, O2 Telefonica experienced uh, quite a significant outage in the UK. And around 20 devices uh, had been camped on the O2 network. And because of this technology, every one of those devices moved away. And if you do read the white paper, you'll see that um, sometimes um, that process is not uh, endemic in automatic network selection. So it won't actually move, move to a different network. Um, 2021, um, that was on a 3G setup. Now 4G are the mainstay. Smart roaming is still doing its thing. And um, delight to say that Voitech is still getting some surety from having smart roaming on the uh, on the gateways. In fact, it's probably just briefly worth mentioning for anyone in BMS or HVAC that the um, environment that these guys facilitate is any LoRa sensor can be become part of a uh, building management system, HVAC system, anything of that ilk, um, especially where traditionally BACnet is uh, a desirable interface. So a LoRa sensor can become a BACnet object uh, in that environment. And we're very proud to be part of that um, really quite complex, a clever and powerful solution uh, provided by the guys at Voitech, at Voitech using their Sitelink product. And so um, time is nearly up. Uh, it went very quick, but hopefully you get um, an idea of, of what we're trying to offer here is improved resilience for your backhaul. And um, highly recommend you go to robustel.com, download the, the white paper from the resources section on the left hand side if you want to get more information. Or, of course, you can speak to myself or any of the Robustel team if you want to learn more about the technology or how you might trial it. Thanks very much. Bye for now.